Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. Thanks for being here. Hey, we're looking at a doctrine that really originated about 235 AD, and it's the eternal generation of the sun. Also, kind of uh, in a sisterly way, known as the eternally begotten son, the eternal generation of the son, or the eternally begotten son. And this is just one of those phraseologies that's kind of contradictory, and it's not found in scripture. So I just want to say thanks for being here. It was developed by a man who's kind of universally acknowledged as a heretic until he's not, and his name was Origen Adumentius fascinating life. I've mentioned some aspects of his life in previous videos. I won't go into it here, but um, he gave us the Hexapla, which was like a Septuagint. Um, he was a very voluminous writer. I've read quite a bit of him many years ago, and he just was a genius. He, his mind was like a uh, pinball. It just went every which way. But he really gave some very bad things into what's known as Christianity, kind of a broad sense of that term. He was very much allegorical in his interpretation of Scripture. And there are certain types and allegories in Scripture, and maybe more than people acknowledge sometimes. But he would almost go look for the allegorical viewpoint first. And so one of the things he developed over the course of time in fighting against certain aspects of actually true Christianity was the eternally begotten nature of the Son, the Son of God, or eternal generation. And you probably could immediately see the contradiction here. Eternal means no generation. Generation means beginning, Genesis, the book of beginning. And so the eternal generation of the Son is just totally non-logical. And it led into the development of the Trinity. And many, most what I would call just regular Trinitarians don't know the theological jargon of Trinitarianism and exactly what it entails. But here, and it's known as the family view of the Trinity, or the social view of the Trinity, so there's some other terminologies along with it, that the father, to be a true father, has to have a son. And so he couldn't be the everlasting father unless he had a son as well. So now you've got two objects in God, and the son is, at the end of the day, eternally inferior, and that is what Origen taught. He did not teach the co-equality of three persons in the Godhead. So eternal, eternally inferior, which is known in some ways as Arianism and uh, A-R-I-A-N, and uh, then since God is love, the love that the Father has to the Son and the Son has to the Father spirates and actually becomes the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. And I know that may sound crazy to you, but that is for millennia the official doctrine of the Trinity. And a lot of people say, well, that's not what I believe about the Trinity, on and on and so forth. That's okay. We're doing a series here showing uh, dozens, really, <laughs> of different perspectives on the Trinity. You know, one school of thought uh, came from Reform many years ago, uh, said there were nine different models of the Trinity. Somebody else came up with 13 models of the Trinity. I think there's a 17 and a 21. But you know, there's in a sense, it depends on the submodalities of the Trinity. You know, there could be into the dozens of different viewpoints and nuances about the Trinity. And so the Son implies, um, again, beginning. Uh, son, we would say unto us, the Son is born unto us, a child is given. The only way the Son would be eternal would be in the mind of God, but not as a separate collateral person, because there's one Savior, one person of God. God is a He, 
not a day. I've done so many different videos on the extremely minuscule amount of times where it seems like God is plural. Overwhelmingly, he's seen as as one and also seen with personal pronoun he, not they. And uh, he's identified like in the King James Bible, which brings Hebrew, Greek, singular, plural distinctions, which makes for extreme accuracy. Um, he is a thee, thou, thine, not a ye, you, yours, which is plural, but he's a thee, thou, thine, O Lord, is the glory. And uh, he's our heavenly father. And so only in the mind of God. Now, some bring the word into it, that the word would be the visible of the invisible, John makes it very clear he's not talking about two separate gods, two powers in heaven. It's just that since God is invisible, which the Bible speaks to that many times, and when it says people saw God, they either saw the Word, which is a visible representation of the invisible. When they used to ask the early oneness uh, bishops of Rome what their views were about the Godhead, they would say, you know, the Father is the invisible, the Son is the visible. And so the word may have uh, be eternal as that which is visible that God in all his resplendent glory you can't see. That it would either mean you're seeing the word or as Second Corinthians would mention you see his face in a glass. His glory is in a glass like you've never seen your face. All you can do is see yourself in a mirror. You cannot, you can see a reflection of yourself, but you can't see your face. So you can see a reflection of the glory of God, but not the glory of God itself. And even uh, Moses could only see his hinder parts, and that was enough to make his face shine with glory. So the eternal generation of the sun is not a biblical doctrine. And if there's any eternality, of the Son, it is the fact that He's the Father and the Son in one person, Christ the Father and the Son in one person, um, or as the Word, or in the mind of God, but not eternally generated. That's not biblical terminology, and it's best to get to biblical terminology. When we talk about God, we don't, little children, keep ourselves from idols. So God bless you. Thanks for watching today. Do check out our other videos. Join us daily. Hit the bell notification. Subscribe. We've got videos from many years ago that still get many, many videos. You might uh, views. Excuse me. You might want to check those out. So God bless. We love you. Bye-bye.